so let's move now to the second part of this lecture the laser tissue interaction it's very important we can say as a conclusion at the beginning to understand the laser tissue interaction in order to optimize the results of our use of the laser and in order to understand why this wavelength must be used for this kind of indication and why we cannot use for example other wavelengths how can we have better results when we have this kind of wavelength so first of all let's start by the basics whenever the energy of the laser touches any living surface let's say the mucosa the skin only these four division of the energy will happen some of this energy will be divided into a transmission and this is clinically significant we can from now in a simplified but yet in a correct way say that the transmission is the energy that will go a little bit in the depth and that will be very interesting for us when we want to stimulate when we want to do the low level laser therapy today it is known as the photobiomodulation so for, this is clinically significant and then we have the absorption the absorption is also clinically significant it is this light that will be immediately absorbed by the tissue and will give us a reaction clinically that we can see so also we can from now relate the word absorption with the efficiency of the laser is cutting with the efficiency of the ablation of the tissue then we have the energy scattered this is a waste of energy and we have the energy that is reflected this is also a waste of energy and this is why we have to wear, to wear in general protective glasses because some of this energy will be wasted and will just be reflected by the surfaces so these are the four energies that will be divided when the laser will uh, hit our targeted tissue then as i've said clinically the most important for us for now is the absorption and the transmission these two have a clinical significance and to simplify things we said that the absorption is related to the efficiency of the cut so this is and i'm going to show you in the coming slides this is what we want to focus about when we want to say for example this uh, this type of laser machine so this wavelength how much is it absorbed in water for example so i will know okay if it is very well absorbed in water then i can use it for the soft tissue management and so on we're going to see on the other hand we have the transmission the transmission is like um, the opposite of the absorption the energy that is not absorbed will be transmitted and this is also significant clinically because this is what we are going to ask for of course we're going to ask about the absorption but only the trans also the transmission when we want to do the photobiomodulation previously known as i've said low level laser therapy so when we want to stimulate when we want to modulate stop the inflammation manage the pain and when we want this and we not we do not really want to cut or like do a surgery with the laser so these are the principles but then we have things or factors that will interfere and will change the importance of the absorption and transmission essentially and also in a simplified way we have this type of the tissue that is going to modify so the composition of the tissue we have to ask ourselves this tissue is um, for example composed of what if it is composed of blood so we will see the absorption in hemoglobin if it is composed uh, in hydro uh, uh, hydro uh, apatitis so it's a, um, a hard tissue like the teeth like the bone we have to see the absorption so this is the tissue type according to each wavelength each wavelength is absorbed in a different way according to the composition on the other hand we have to see the parameters because even with the same wavelength with the same composition of the tissue if we change the parameters for sure we will change um, the depth of the absorption we will change the clinical outcome so these are the two essential things that are going to interfere with our efficiency when using the laser so maybe this is one of the most important slides here i'm showing the lasers that are usually used in dentistry in stomatology and in medicine we will start for example we'll give the example of the 980 nanometer wavelength according to this 
curve of absorption, coefficient of absorption, we can see that the 980 nanometer wavelength is perfectly absorbed in the pigmentation, so we can use it. It is perfectly absorbed in hemoglobin, and this is why we use the 980 nanometer wavelength to cut the gingiva, the tongue, um, to do a small surgery because we have a very good absorption in hemoglobin, but also it is very absorbed, or it is, let's say, fairly absorbed in water. So this is also why we use it for the soft tissue management. We can notice here that when it comes to hydroxyapatitis, the 980 nanometer wavelength is not absorbed. So this is why the 980 nanometer diode laser is not indicated for the heart tissue management, okay? While here we have the airbium YAG, you can see that the airbium YAG is perfectly absorbed in the hydroxyapatitis, so it is used in order to uh, manage, in order to cut, and in order to do a, a, an osteoplasty, or in order to remove a dental decay, so because it is well absorbed in the heart tissue and the hydroxyapatitis. So this is how you have to think when you want to use the laser. Now you understand the basic concepts of the laser and the tissue interaction. You need the wavelength in order to know this wavelength, how it is absorbed. And from this, you can know what you will have clinically. And if you can use this laser for this kind of indication. Here, I'm going to give two examples. 980 nanometer wavelength is the wavelength used for the surgery. I've explained this before because it is well absorbed in hemoglobin and water, so we can use it for the soft tissue management only. Now, the 635 nanometer wavelength, if you can look at this uh, coefficient of absorption, you can see that it is not well absorbed, and this is what we want when we want to stimulate. We want this energy to go into the depth, and this is why it is used for the photobiomodulation, for the low-level laser therapy, for the pain management. Our aim is not to cut, our aim is really to transmit the energy and the depth. Here I'm going to show you with the 980 nanometer wavelength, the efficiency of the cut. You can see clearly how clean and not the cut is and how it is um, somehow deep. So it's fairly deep and very fast. Why? Because it is well absorbed in the water and you can see clearly how the water is vaporizing immediately. Now the third part, the